Hey, welcome back everybody to Old Volks TV. Today we are going to look at this motor. Uh, you might remember this motor from a couple episodes ago when we threw it together real quick. Kind of went over your options of building something like this. Uh, this is our basic 1641 that's going in the ragtop bug that we're building. And uh, today we're going to sort of tear it down back to a long block. We're going to clean it up, get rid of some of the oil leaks maybe. I'll show you how to clean off some of the old gaskets uh, that are in there. And, you know, basically get it ready for the build. Um, maybe we can see if we can get these tins to fit a little better, although these are not the tins really necessarily that I'm going to use. Um, but I can show you how to tweak them and trim them and sort of bend them out so they fit a little gaps. Uh, so we're going to do that. We'll show you the right way to clean the case without stripping the coating off, uh, which makes the metal get very brittle and, and unusable eventually if you leave it uncoated. They have a little bit of a waxy coating on them from the factory. So if we scrub it too hard and we get that off, then we're going to need to throw some paint on there uh, just to protect it. Now I know some of you are going to say if you paint the case, it's going to run hot. That's not really the case. I mean, if you gook on all kinds of paint, sure, it might get a little bit hotter, but we're not painting the heads. We're not painting the pistons and cylinders uh, or the cylinders anyways. So all the heat's going to really be out here. This isn't really going to get that much hotter. Um, we're also running an external cooler on this with a fan and all kinds of other high tech stuff. So I feel like it's not going to be an issue, but this case is pretty nice. I don't think we're going to have to paint it anyways. But uh, we'll get this stripped down and we'll show you guys how to clean it and prep it for a build. So hopefully one day you can do your own. It's really not that scary. And then uh, in a future episode, we're going to get it all put together with the painted tins that we have to match the car and then hopefully get it in the car eventually, which would be really nice because uh, I would like to start driving that car. So here we go. We'll jump in. We'll tear it down really fast and then uh, we'll get into the cleaning and the nasty. So. Here we go. Okay, so what I use to clean these, super simple, a little bit of easy green, I'm sure you can figure that out, it's about a 50-50 mix with water. Um, straight would work too if it was super duper greasy, uh, but this is not super duper greasy, so uh, we're just going to give her a spray. You don't have to worry too much if you get it in the little holes because we're going to change the oil before um, you know before we put it in there anyways but try to avoid spraying it directly into any of the the holes the ports here so I just usually give her a, a good hose down um, on my table but down here it's kind of hard to see because I got the camera at a weird angle but uh, I have a little absorbent mat this stuff is super good for this type of work uh, mostly because it doesn't let the stuff really get past the table too bad. Uh, so it makes cleanup later easy. Uh, this one's actually not as bad as I thought. It's mostly concentrated down here on the heads. Uh, I think we had a valve cover leak, so we got a little crusty, but not too bad. These valve covers are going to get changed. Uh, push rod tubes are going to get changed out. Uh, so really, to get the oil in the 
crap off of the case here. I'll give it a little spray down. And then, uh, oh, there's my brush. It's in the drawer under the camera. Take one of these, which is just a uh, little nylon brush from Harbor Freight. I think they're a dollar, but it's really all you need. Um, it's gonna, if you let that easy green stuff, you know, the spray kind of do its job and soak it in, Oops. You can, you know, you just gently give that a little agitation. And uh, you don't have to worry that you're taking off into the outer coating. Now, as we're just getting in here below this greasy mess, I can see that this case has actually been painted uh, before. So I don't have to be as careful because now I know that I'm gonna have to paint it again uh, once I get it all cleaned up, I'm going to have to paint it again because I don't want a half silver, half not painted, you know, kind of case. So, somebody painted the oil pressure switch here. I'm going to probably end up replacing that. But for now, we'll just leave it in there because it covers a hole. That's pretty much it for cleaning the case. I'm gonna jump into hyper mode and watch me pick my way through this and then uh, do something else after that. Uh, oh, real quick, one thing I do too is uh, I take the little, do that. This is not a scrapey, gougy razor blade. It's a very small, easy to control razor blade. You don't want to cut the case. You don't want to gouge it. But somebody's put some assembly crap between the case halves here, like you shouldn't. And uh, I don't really like that. So, easy as that. Scrapes right off. A little old gasket right here, away from the hole. You know, we are going to change the oil. Most stuff's going to get taken out anyways, but try to not get it in there. Um, you can stick a paper towel in there. You want to be sure there's nothing that's in there except in this hole right here. If I can get you in there, you probably won't be able to see it, but right there, down inside that hole, oop, this hole over here, right here, there's a little spring for the distributor. Don't lose that. That little guy. So that little guy belongs in there. And if you don't have that, your distributor is going to beat itself to death uh, jumping up and down. So that little feller, he lives right in there. Right in the hole. And I usually just leave him in there because I'm not going to flip this one over. And, uh, not on an engine stand, so should be good enough. So I'm gonna jump in there and give her a quick scrub down, get rid of some of this grossness, see how the case looks underneath. Um, I don't see any cracks. When they're painted, it can hide the cracks. Um, but as we know from before, I got this motor from a friend and it was running, uh, albeit leaky, but running. So it's a, uh, it wasn't leaking from anywhere that might have been cracked. It was basically just leaking from push rod tubes and valve covers. So I'll clean her up and we'll jump back in close and we'll do something else fun.
All right, so I got the valve cover off. Lost my pick. Uh, it's actually not too bad in there. It looks pretty clean. Let's see if we can get a better angle on that. So it's not too bad uh, inside. A little bit of that is burnt oil looks like. Uh, so I'm gonna take these heads off and check inside the uh, the cylinders. Anyways, there's some goopy, goopy weird stuff. Looks like JB Weld on this spark plug, um, and that's kind of concerning. It looks like somebody put that in there to hold the spark plug in. That's pretty not good. Let's see if we can get in there. Oh, we got weird lights. Hold on. <laughs> All right. You can see in there. It looks like somebody tried to weld that spark plug in with JB Weld. Uh, which is not good. You ultimately don't want JB Weld holding your spark plugs in. Uh, so I'm gonna have to pull this head off and do some investigating, uh, but that's a job for another day. Uh, right now we're just sort of checking to make sure that there's no cracks on the outside, that they're not in horrible shape. Uh, these look to be newer heads. Uh, yeah, these are are Mexican dual port heads so should be good I mean they don't look too bad other than this weird baby welded spark plug thing um, wish I would have seen that before but it had tins on it when I got it you really want to check these things out when you buy a used motor because um, it could really bite you you know if you get one and you didn't go through it you know thoroughly you just took their word for it and threw it in you know it might not might not last you very long you get stuck and you got to buy another motor you know you blow something up or you get in a wreck uh, so you definitely want to check in here make sure this isn't cracked or or welded on or gouged up you know this one looks pretty flat looks like it's pretty good shape kind of scrape off the old gasket somebody glued everything together on this motor it's so weird you know, none of this stuff looks cracked. These don't look like they've been replaced. These look to be the right studs, uh, the right size. Got the case savers back there on uh, three of them. This one is missing it. Uh, super not good too, so I'm gonna have to probably put one in there. Uh, the rest of them look good though. Uh, the valve train looks pretty good. You know, no broken rockers, no missing shims. Got the wrong hardware holding it on, but it didn't look too bad. I don't know if that's oil in there, or if it's just assembly. It comes right off. It's crispy actually, but it's, it's everywhere in there. It's gotta be like a thread locker or something. It's coming out of all the head studs in there. So I'll take these off uh, later when I have time to throw them in the tumbler. I don't like to leave the heads off for very long uh, if I'm not rebuilding the inside because, you know, water, moisture gets in there. Kind of cause a problem with that. I don't have a lot of oil in this right now uh, just because I am working on it and I wanted to take it apart. So I did drain it and roll it around to get the oil out so as not to make a huge mess. Uh, you can pop these valve covers off even when you do your uh, valve adjustment. If you're quick, you can pop these off and set them down under here and you'll catch any drips and save yourself from having to clean the floor. I learned that uh, really early on. I am not the guy that likes to stand around and clean after a job, so I try to do everything as clean as possible as I go. Uh, but that's a good trick to take the valve cover, flip it down, and uh, 
you know, stick it right underneath there. So that's pretty good. Uh, this head doesn't look too bad other than and that's, that JB Weld's not on the head. It's just on the plug. So, I don't know. Uh, we'll mess with that another day. No, this was just basically get the thing torn down and get it get it cleaned up, show you how we do it. We use the simple green, I'm sorry, easy green. Uh, no, no copyright infringement there. Uh, and the little wire brush, not a wire brush, but a uh, plastic bristle brush so you don't scratch up and gouge everything up. On the heads, they're, you know, just cast aluminum. You can actually use a... Uh, I've used the brass brush on those before, some of the stuff that's that's really stubborn and doesn't want to come off. Um, you can use brake cleaner also. Just want to make sure that you don't get a whole lot of stuff down inside the holes if you can avoid it. This is heads coming off, so anything that gets down the intake is going to come off. It won't get past the pistons, you know, usually, unless it's a whole bunch of liquid. Um, but the case is looking pretty good. You know, I got a little more cleaning to do. But, you know, that's easy enough to do. All right, so that was pretty good. Uh, I lost my microphone, so I tried to do a little voiceover action. Uh, hopefully that worked out, because that was like five minutes of me explaining all the very important points of uh, cleaning the motor. So hopefully we got it. Uh, whatever, it's a new dimension of the video. Uh, so we went through, showed you how to do the distributor, how to get the case clean. Uh, it's cleaning up pretty good, so I'm happy with it. Uh, we'll pull the heads off in another video and, and show you. That's pretty detailed stuff, so I want to spend a, a little while over there showing you how to get them off, what to look for when you're taking them off, you know, the right way to do it, the right way to put them back on, cleaning the carbon off the piston. So this will be part one, you know, get it torn down and get it cleaned up, and then uh, part two we'll get start getting the heads off we'll do the push rod tubes i'll show you how to stretch those guys out uh, so you don't get a leak how to put the new seals on there and everything and uh, you know maybe we'll do a little sandblast thing get the rust and the crap off of there so i don't know i hope that worked for you you can see you know basically you can buy a, a junky motor and uh especially if it was in a running car you can actually make it look pretty nice pretty easily with you know a five dollar gallon of green cleaner um, it's it's nice that stuff because you can dilute it down and you don't have to put something so caustic on here that it's going to wreck the, the metal um, some of those really heavy degreasers and things can you know they can start to etch into the metal if you don't get them off all the way this stuff's so mild and it's mixed 50 50 with water so it gets the grease off without really hurting anything and it works really good um, you know we'll, we'll cover these holes up and we'll shoot that with some brake cleaner once everything is assembled. We know it's not going to come apart again. Um, and then we'll cover everything up and we'll get some paint on it. On this case to protect it. I've got... Let uh, me use this stuff. The uh, Kimball Midwest Ultra Pro Max Semi-Gloss Black. It's actually more of like a gunmetal gray color. So it pretty much comes out looking like the uh, you know clean magnesium look. So we'll get get the rest of the oil off of here and get everything cleaned up really nice and uh, we'll get it painted for you and then uh, you can come back and see it and we'll, we'll put it back together if you have any questions about any of that stuff uh, get us in the comments down below and uh, you know we'll answer those questions for you if you like what you saw hit that subscribe button you know hit that little bell ring the bell for me so you can get your notifications we come out every Wednesday at 8 30 uh, we've got our friends VW Life putting out great videos. I think they just put out the Junebug video uh, part two for the Junebug rally. So you get to see the uh, the ultimate finish and the huge party afterwards. You know, we captured a little bit of it, but uh, Matt Jackson got in there and really got all of it. You know, that guy is like everywhere with his camera. So it's a good video. Check them out, VW Life on YouTube. Check us out at VolksAmerica.com. Uh, we've got the uh, Volks Mania coming out. Folks America is coming out again, uh, 14 I think, issue, issue 14 is coming out pretty soon. Uh, we've got the Volks America YouTube channel coming out really soon. Um, we're having a big party for that uh, at Top Notch here in a little bit. So 
We're gonna launch that page. That's gonna be pretty great. Uh, VolksAmerica.com. Get your subscriptions. Volksmania is a free magazine too. You can go there, sign up, get your free Volksmania magazine. Uh, if you get it subscribed and you're one of the first like 5,000 subscribers, I think you get a, a free commemorative sticker for Volksmania number one. It's a pretty sweet sticker. I've seen it. Uh, so check us out there. Subscribe to all our our pages, our channels, our magazines. You know, just get it all. Get it all in there. Get all the information you need. And uh, subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell two friends. Thanks for watching.